In this video, we will discuss essential concepts of JIRA relevant to individuals and teams. We will start by briefly defining what JIRA is, and later we will talk about JIRA projects, issues and issue types, system and custom fields, and workflows. Let's begin. JIRA, in its essence, is a ticketing system. It allows users to create and manage tickets, or issues as we will usually call them, through their lifecycle. Where the strength of JIRA lies is its flexibility and adaptability. So even though you may think of JIRA just as a ticketing system, it can be so much more than that. To keep the work environment tidy, you need a way to organize and manage the information. In your room, you might use drawers, shelves, or boxes, but in JIRA, you will use projects. The simplest definition of a JIRA project is that it's a container for issues. An issue will always belong to a project and an issue can't exist outside of one. Of course, JIRA projects allow you to do a lot more than just put tickets inside. In projects you have access to, you will most likely be able to create, edit and change statuses of issues inside that project, communicate with other users through comments, link issues, and possibly even more if your permissions will let you. JIRA issues are the main elements of JIRA. In the most basic approach, we could say that an issue represents a piece of work to be performed. You have to realize that JIRA allows you to use many different issue types. Every time you create a new issue, it will be of a certain type. Among several default issue types that JIRA offers out of the box, you will find tasks and subtasks. Usually, tasks are used to represent a defined piece of work to be performed. Subtasks are used to divide tasks into smaller pieces that are easier to handle and distribute. They can only exist as part of tasks or other issue types. JIRA issues can also represent a variety of other things features or larger pieces of work to be delivered. One of the issue types that is meant to do that is an EPIC, which is available in JIRA software and has some additional functions that will be discussed in the following videos. For software projects, issues may be used to represent user stories, tests, bugs, technical problems, change requests, and so on. Truth be told, this is the origin of JIRA, which has been just a simple bug tracker a long time ago. For non-software projects, tasks and subtasks can be used to represent your team's work of all kinds. Some common examples include enablement, recurring maintenance, internal initiatives, and more. Anything that has an end date can be represented and broken down into smaller work elements. It's also common to capture the work needed to create and release a document as JIRA issues. Think invoices, legal documents, memos, or any other document that is unique and gets often replicated with the same list of parameters but different values. While I'm talking about JIRA issues, I'll also mention some ways of monitoring, sharing, and collaborating. There are four things I want to point out. There is a functionality allowing you to watch an issue. You should use this when you would like to be informed about any changes like a status update, new information added, or a new comment. Sometimes, depending on your permissions, you might even be able to add additional watchers other than yourself. Right next to watchers, there is a voting option. It allows you to express your interest or support for an issue. In some areas, it makes sense to prioritize the issues with the most votes. To share the issue with others, I would use one of these options. Use a built-in share button, simply select the recipient, write your message and send it. Or you can copy the link to the issue and send it via any communication channel. To do it, you can click here or here or simply copy the URL from the browser. Collaboration has always been very important in Jira. While viewing an issue, you can always press M button on your keyboard or go here to add a comment. It has a rich text editor and you can also easily mention people which will be sending them notifications when you hit save. 
Having separate issue types is helpful to group and categorize your work and collect specific data based on the work to be done. Issue types can differ in several different ways, but let's discuss the most important ones. The first difference is data fields. Each issue has a set of standard fields. These are, among others, reporter field, which holds information about who created a given issue, assignee field, defines a person responsible for the issue, or summary and description fields. Quite self-explanatory these two, aren't they? But Jira also allows you to define additional custom fields of different types like dropdowns, text, number, date, user, and others. Each of these custom fields can be added to the issue type of your choosing. This means that if we have a total value custom field, we can add it to the invoice issue type where it is needed and not add it to the task issue type which doesn't need it. As you can imagine, having the possibility of creating an issue type with any set of parameters allows you to make sure that it will store all the right information that it gathers throughout its lifecycle. Remember that you will also be able to filter by all of these parameters, which is extremely important for any kind of reporting, which I'm sure you will need at some point. More on that in the following videos. Another useful Jira feature is Jira issue links. Issue linking allows you to create relations between two Jira issues. There can be multiple types of these relations or links. Let's take a look at an example. We can create a new link between issues by clicking the plus icon. We have multiple link types to choose from. In this example, we will focus on blocks and is blocked by, which are two ends of the same link type. When we link the current issue with the other one with a blocks link, we are saying that one cannot be started without the other being completed. It's just information at this point though, and it's worth noting that Jira doesn't enforce this behavior. After creating a link, we can clearly see this issue blocks the other issue, and if we take a look at the other end of this link, we will see that this one is blocked by the first one. As you can see, links are directional. Relation between two issues that are linked may point to the role of each of these issues in this relation. It's worth noting that apart from system and custom fields, links or attachments, Jira stores also other information related to issues, like a history of changes, time spent working on it and comments entered by Jira users. The second great feature related to issue types is customized workflow. Similar to custom fields, workflows are associated to issue types, so each issue type can have its own workflow or several issue types might share the same workflow. But what are workflows? Workflows define how an issue moves through its lifecycle. It is defined by a set of statuses with possible transitions between these statuses. Each transition between statuses can be restricted to be allowed only to authorized users and each transaction can trigger a predefined automatic action called post function. For example, automatic custom field updates, assigning issue to a specific user, or limiting issue visibility to selected user or group of users. All of the above have to be configured by your Jira admin. This native customization in Jira allows us to create a workflow that can, for example, include an approval from a certain person or a group of people. And this approval will be given by performing a transition, let's say from status waiting for approval to approved. And this approval would be required before you can perform any further work on this issue, including transitioning it to other statuses. Pretty cool, right? As you can see, there is no exaggeration in saying that Jira is a very flexible tool. By now, you should better understand the basic building blocks of it, like projects and issues, but you should also realize that there are many adjustments that can be applied to them to make the Jira software your perfect workplace. 
As a standard user, you don't need to worry about it, but if you're managing or helping to manage any kind of a team, you will probably be happy to talk with your Jira administrator or Atlassian partner about the best configuration of issue types, fields, links, workflows, project roles and permissions, plus notification schemes to best serve your purpose and needs. Thank you. We have the right expertise to handle your project. Discuss your needs with your C Prime sales representative or go to cprime.com slash Atlassian.